Gold Hall of Treasure Vaults are one of the most exciting ways to make gold. They're also one of the most profitable, yet most people have no idea how to do them efficiently, let alone work out the puzzle in the main room. Today, I'm going to be taking you through a complete guide to treasure vaults and how to do them and the most efficient way to do them, and how to do them solo as well. I'm going to be showing you some clean run-throughs and also how the voyage works. So if you're one of those people that still hasn't mastered them, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The first thing you need to do before you start these gold hoarder vaults is get to reputation 25 in the gold hoarders. You won't be able to buy any vaults before you reach this level, but it's very easy to get to. You can more or less get there by scavenging around random islands, finding loot, and just really organically playing the game. Once you are ready to start, however, though, go to your nearest gold hoarder and buy a vault voyage. Once you've bought it, also remember to vote up an emissary. If you don't know what these are, in short, they will build up a multiplier of gold and rep. Then, vote on the voyage and you can begin. Once you've voted on it, you can begin. You'll be given a golden wayfinder compass, and this golden wayfinder compass will point to where you need to go. So simply follow it to your destination. You'll know when it's getting close, as it'll start to twitch like it's mentally unstable. Once you reach your island, it'll start to twitch further, and you just have to completely follow it to where it spins around in a circle. So as you can see here, it's spinning around, and that's where we need to dig. Once you've dug it up, there's a small chance that gold for the skeletons will spawn. It's really important you kill these because there's a further small chance that they'll drop relics. Once you pick up your torn map parchment, You'll notice you get a map, now only one piece of this will be here. You need to keep following the process that you just did until you unlock the map parchment with the X on it, so simply follow the golden wayfinder to your next place. Now just keep repeating the process over and over again, wait till it spins in a circle, and dig. You'll usually get the map after 2-3 to three dig spots. And we didn't. Well, there's always the third. On small islands, you'll only get one guaranteed dig spot, but on big islands, there's a small chance you can either get two or even three dig spots. Now we should be getting the X because it does two to three normally. You have to be kidding me. What, what is this luck? Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So simply follow the process again and dig up your final big spot, which you should never have to do. So then we just pick it up and look where the X is. Um, excuse me? Once you've realised that the X is on one of the lines and you feel like blunderbombing yourself to go to the Ferry of the Dam to sit and think about how stupid these quests are, blow up a ship to calm yourself down. Maybe you'll safari cannon while you're at it. Head to your island that you've got the map on, and then go to your X location and dig it up. Gold holder skeletons are guaranteed to spawn on this dig, so it's important you kill them. As, as I said, they drop relics, and some relics can be really valuable, more valuable than you think. Once you've killed them, proceed to open it, and you'll notice that you get a totem inside. The totem will be called an island, and then it'll say what type of key it is. This island is what island you need to go to. Let's talk keys for a second. You can have stone keys, silver keys, and gold keys. Each key corresponds to how good loot the vault's gonna be. The higher tier your voyage, the more chance of getting a higher tier vault key you're gonna get. Inside the vaults, everything will be less for stone, better for silver, but really good for gold. For stone keys, you'll also only get a guaranteed stronghold chest where the tribute's located. For a silver, it's a 50-50, and for a gold, it's a guaranteed tribute. As you level up, you'll get better gold vault voyages, and then you'll eventually get better keys. So just keep doing these, and then you'll eventually level up. 
You also not get many captain's chests in the normal vaults, stone vaults, but in the silver vaults you get some, and in the gold vaults you'll get a lot of them. All the loot works up how you'd expect it to. To actually find out where the vault is on the island, you can view an inscription which will give you a clue as to where it is. Another clue is to look for rock paintings in a vault-like door. Near it you should see a little plinth that you can place your key on and then a wall nearby will slide back. Then just drop down and wait for the vault to open. I always find pleading really helps. <laughs> See? Works every time. Okay, so in the vault you've been met with loads of chests, loads of gold. But for now we're going to focus on getting the tributes or the bit in the main vault out. You'll see in the stone table that there are three spots for three medallions. You'll only need one of these medallions and they're fairly easy to locate as they glow with a white sparkle, like a message in a bottle. Would. Just pick one of these up and then return it to the altar. Once you put it in, the altar will flash and it will show you the first block. So we can see that that's a chest. So we're going to spin that block to be a chest. We're then going to skip to the fourth block. Now this fourth block is a combination of the other three blocks. Now there'll be two chest blocks and there'll be two other types of blocks. In this case it's a skull. So you've narrowed it down to two out of four. Then just fill in the blanks. You'll see on there that there's a lock and key and a chain. You simply find a lock and key and the orientation does matter of the lock and key. And then if you've inputted them all correctly, you'll have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And in most cases, you will. So then you're free to get the tributes out. You also get a bit of emissary dying for that. Alternatively, you can put every medallion in and then you'll just get the combination in front of you. This is not as secure as you don't know if you'll get it out in time because that involves finding all the medallions around the room. Then, you're free to get as much loot out as possible. I know I was doing this with two people, but you can still do it solo. I've done it many times solo and it's quite easy to do. Just simply get as much as you care to out. There's loads of stuff in the gold vaults though, so you really want to get everything out. Now worth, it's worth noting, do not go for the gold piles in these. Until the end, the gold piles are trying to trick you into thinking that there's loads of gold there. There's not, it gives you a few hundred at a time. Now you won't get emissary value for picking the chests in the vault, but you will for putting them on your ship. The only chest you'll get emissary value for picking up is the chest to make your tributes. Once you've got all your loot on board, you can go to the nearest outpost and sell it all. Normal vaults roughly give around 60k with 2.5 emissary, but with one vault you'll roughly get a grade 4.5, meaning you'll only get times 2. It's still a really good amount, however. And also remember to lower the emissary flag to get that extra golden rep. I'm now going to show you what an ideal vault run would look like. Now it's worth noting, this vault that I'll be doing, I'll be doing it with someone, so I won't be doing it solo. While we're just entering the vault, there's a couple things I want to make clear. There are lots of different strategies for different ships. On a sloop, you want one person to go for the tributes, one person to get all the treasure chests out on the first and second level, and then the person that did the tributes can drop it from the third and fourth level, while the other person gets it all out. On a brigantine, two people are going to get chests out while one person does the tributes and then helps them. Then on a galleon, it's the same thing as the brigantine, just you're going to work more cohesively. It's worth noting there are also lots of different vault layouts you can get. So here we are in the vault, and I immediately start looking for medallions. Because I don't see any on the bottom floor, while I climb up, I'm just going to drop some chests down on the way, as it saves time for later. These chests will generally be the less valuable ones, but there can still be captain's chests there. The more valuable ones will usually be higher up in the vault. So I'm still not seeing any medallion, and it's slightly worrying, but I know I'll probably find one, as it's probably on the other side of the vault. It 
So then because I haven't found any on this area, I jump down and then I see a medallion. So then using the one medallion method, we can see what's inside. And that gives us the answer to the first block. And using the method we discussed earlier, I can quickly work out what the tribute is. And there we go. The 50-50 chance has paid off. So then now I've got the tributes out, we can more or less stop worrying. We can now go to the higher levels and get all the good blue out, but it is starting to hit the later stages of the vault and time is running out. So then this little podium up here, which is hanging from the ceiling, is where most of the good stuff is going to be. The higher levels is where really good chests and really good relics and loot are going to be. then this bit here is the final place where I can drop chests down. So then I have a final look around and I discover that there's nothing left. You can hear the music really building up down, implying that we really don't have much time left. So we get the remaining relics and chests that are on the ground and then we can start grabbing a couple gold pass with the small time we have left. Now these gold pass always have to be left to last because they are literally worthless. Even the big ones, if they look valuable, they're really not. You'll see here. See, we only got 105 gold. Now that was the smallest gold pile you can get, but they are the quickest to get. And honestly, the gold piles really aren't worth it. So you heard there the SFX of the door is about to slam shut. And my friend is going to stay in and grab all the gold piles, or as many as she can, before she dies. Now it's worth noting, when the door closes, the room fills up with water and you drown significantly quicker. Within a few seconds, you'll start drowning and then your health goes down a lot quicker than normal. But you can still grab some gold piles while in there. So always make sure to leave even just one person out in the vault, just so that the vault doesn't close. Because if all your crew die, then the island will reset and then the vault will close and then your loot will be stuck in there for one hour, unless you sail away or you have another vault key to open it up with. So that is it. I hope this guide was really useful and you learn about the vaults because as I say, most people really don't know how to do them and it really surprises me because they're very simple as you've just found out. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like. And if you're new around here, why not consider subscribing? It's free and I do sound tricks, gameplay, guides, all the rest of it, loads of CFT stuff and we're very close to a thousand. I've got a Discord server ready for me to get to a thousand. Loads of big plans for a thousand. I'm gonna do some celebration stuff and maybe I'll even start streaming at some point. But anyway, if you do subscribe, please hit the bell as well so you're notified when I upload videos. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.